Many times when we're playing chess, we're just very impatient. We just want to make our move, attack our opponent's king, checkmate them, go home. Easy. Easy life, no problems. But unfortunately, as you probably already know, life is not like that. Life is difficult. So probably in that process you got checkmated yourself. In today's video I'm going to show you a video. Wait. In today's video I'm going to show you a game that will hopefully be a remedy to your impatience. So this is known as the Immortal Waiting Game. It's a very famous game played between Ulf Anderson with the white pieces and John Bassman as the black pieces. And notice how Bassman, who's a legend from England, he's not even a grandmaster by the way, he wasn't a grandmaster, he was an international master, but you can tell how strong he was as an international master to be well recognized worldwide. And by the way, Ulf Anderson is a legend as well. Grandmaster, very strong grandmaster actually. Both of these guys were very strong in the 1970s, 1980s, that's around their prime. But notice how black is just waiting. So we opened up with knight f3, we're not gonna uh, base our main focus on the opening, uh, but it was interesting to look at. It's some sort of English, Catalanish, Queens Indian, hybrid it all transposed into everything but i think towards this side of things now it's known as uh, a queen's indian although it's yeah you can you can transpose from a catalan if black goes b6 bishop b7 eventually so 95 h6 already here you can tell that black is playing for kind of not waiting right away but white is just wait sorry black is just waiting until what white wants to do and that's what happens very often when you're going for this d4, d5, b6, bishop, b7 setups. Black is a little bit more passive than white. So bishop f4, developing the bishop, a6, once again, h6 followed by a6. It's not clear what black setup is yet, but it's still not the moment that we want to analyze profoundly. Um, profoundly. e takes d5, some, some exchanges in the center happened. Queen b3, bishop a8, rook fd1. And this is where the waiting starts. So this, according to the computer, is an advantage for white. And it's quite, yeah, you know, intuitive. The rooks are better placed than black's rooks. There's a knight in the middle. This knight is a little bit underdeveloped. Bishop difference, yeah. The queen difference as well. So it's clear that white is better. How does white target black's weakness? Where is black's weakness? That's another question. For instance... It's not clear what black's weakness is. You could argue that it's c7, but how do you particularly attack c7? It's not clear yet. d5 is under some pressure. In fact, black can never really go c5 because d takes c5. White already has one, two, three, four pieces attacking that, and we only have three defending. So, all of those things being said, Basman understood its assignment of not knowing what to do, or not knowing what to do, but also, not having to do anything. And as John Spielman quoted another very strong player from England, Grandmaster, he said, Basman in this game mastered the art of inactivity and played king h7. What does this move do, David? It waits. King g8, second move. King h7 again, third move in a row. So Basman is just waiting, and in the meantime, Ulf Anderson is claiming that He's doing little improving moves. Then on the one side, black is just waiting without affecting anything in their position. But white is actually making moves to improve its position. So h3, g4, you can argue that it's going for a kingside attack. But as you will already see in this game, it also weakens the kingside. So Basman is claiming here that white doesn't have any serious breakthrough. And actually that's 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 true to some extent. The bishop g3, white is the, the, like just improving a little bit. Black continues to wait now, this time with bishop b7. e3, bishop a8, back and forth, bishop b7 again, f4, bishop a8 again, and after rook d2, queen d6 again. Like now, it's not waiting with bishop b7 anymore. Queen d6 is a very psychological move because it's not planning to do anything. You don't want to put your queen on e6. You're putting your queen in the in the front of this diagonal. But the only reason why Basman played queen d6 is because after f5, it was clear that he wasn't going to leave that queen there. As we already saw in the last moves, he would go back. So look at this. 
This is move 22. And black's pieces are all in these squares. Remember, memorize all of these squares. If we go back to move 12, it's exactly the same. White has had 10 moves in a row to do whatever they want. And still, after queen d8, white hasn't won yet. This is the reason why this is an immortal game, but let's continue looking at this. Let's continue analyzing this. So bishop b4 was played, continuing this, this improving bishop b7. Black is not doing anything new. We, we already looked at the last five moves. Black hasn't done anything significant. Rook g1, claiming that, okay, h4, g5 at some point, we will go for a king set attack as white, and the rook on g1 is going to be well placed. Black went c6, over defending d5. Now black is doing something, probably bishop c8, trying to get this bishop out, or knight d7, because now that the d5 pawn is defended by a pawn, uh, another pawn, I should say, you can move this knight away. Bishop f3 was played, knight h7. Now this g5 move was a little bit of worrying, so Bassman correctly prevents it, anticipates it. Rook c1 may be claiming that c6, the weakness, the newly made weakness, although this pawn on the c file in general is the weakest in these structures, uh, claiming that they're putting a rook in the c file, therefore the c6 weakness will be even weaker at some point. But it's very easy to say that. It's not going down anytime soon. This, this, this c6 pawn is well defended. The bishop d6, improving the position of the bishop, I guess that if you got, had gone knight d7, knight takes d7, and then queen takes b6, and you lose a pawn. I had to activate the engine for that one, I must say. But bishop d6, uh, knight a4. b6 is a weakness, as we already kind of showed in the last variation. So black went bishop c7. This little maneuver is saving b6 from getting taken uh, in the short term. King g3 was played. This is kind of the, the part of the game where maybe this is not objectively losing yet. But it, it's already going the wrong way. Because, sure, white is going for a king's side attack. But the king on g3 is weak. If this king was on b1, sorry, king on b1 or an a1, it wouldn't be anything to worry about. Maybe it would be easier to go, you know, h4 and sacrifice his pawn and then open files. But the king is on g3. And that's going to be important. Knight f6 played. h4 going for that king's side attack. And after knight fd7, we have the critical position of this game. This is the moment in which you you made history as black. So this is the moment where Michael Basman pretty much took the game in his own hands. He took the driver's seat and drove the point home. So in this position, white had to find e4. And after d takes e4, bishop takes e4. And after queen e7, bishop b1. And this is the engine line. After knight takes e5, you have to find also rook e1, not taking immediately. And after this, white has an advantage. But this is difficult to find. And white played knight takes d7. Question mark. This is a mistake. Why is this a mistake? Because after knight takes d7, all of a sudden this king is weak. So all of the grip that you had on e5 disappears. And now that black has finally this knight out of, like, developed, then it's going to be difficult for white to get an advantage. More concretely speaking, I think this king always was kind of a, a danger for white. And this knight, white knight on e5 was holding things together, hoping for an advantage. But now that it's easier to get bishop takes f4 maybe, or h5 sometimes, and this weakness on f5, f5 with bishop c8, it's going to be easier for black to, to target that, that king. The rook e2 was played. Rook e8, finally, a little bit more development. King h3. Bishop takes f4. e takes f4. Rook takes e2. And after all of these exchanges, it's quite clear that after queen e7, black is absolutely fine. Black is controlling the only open file of the game. Black's knight is going to go into the game as well. There is going to be this h5 pawn break, which is a very particular one. Normally h5 is not a good pawn break, but it is in this case, because this pawn on f5 will give access for black to get into, attacking, into an attacking position. Bishop f3 was played. b5. You want to move the knight, so b6 is a little bit weak, sorry. b6 is a little bit weak, so you either move the pawn forward or you go back, but of course, out of those two, you would push the pawn, you gain a tempo. Knight c5, bishop c8, which turns out to be a little bit of an inaccuracy, was better to take directly. 
But okay, Bishop C8, it's very easy for me to say I'm, I'm, I'm sitting down here with the engine on. Queen D3 was played. And after H5, the pawn break that we were talking about, black has a slight advantage. Now, in this position, white had to take on D7. But black, sorry, but white made the mistake of taking on H5. And now, once again, we have, they exchanged mistakes. I'm assuming that they were in time trouble. Black had to play knight takes e5 first, and after d takes e5, queen f6, f6. But queen f6 was played first. White made a mistake again. Knight takes e5 finally. Bishop takes e5. And now we can stop finally and evaluate. So what do we have here? We have pawn, 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 pawn. Pawn, 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 pawn. So it's equal material, but structure-wise, white has double pawns on the king side, on the h file. This pawn is isolated. This pawn is isolated. Let's put it on red because it's bad. And this isolate, uh, island of pawns is okay. But everything else is kind of horrible. On the other hand, black only has two pawn islands. And the least amount of islands you have, the less amount of islands, I should say, you have, the better. The pawn islands. So, queen c3 was played, targeting the c6 pawn. Black defended that with bishop d7. Queen d3 back. And black finally improved the rook. So it's funny, there are so many pieces that black never moved in the game. The knight on b8, the rook on f8, the bishop on e7, the bishop on b7, now on d7. And this rook now gets into the game. So it's just amazing to think that someone of Ulf Anderson's caliber couldn't win this game. And it's not criticism. I wouldn't say I would do it any better. But it's just amazing to think. The waiting game. Immortal. So rook c1 was played, rook e8, occupying the e-file. And black's pieces are essentially more active. The king's safety of white is un like unsafe. The like king's safety wise, black is better because white's king is unsafe. And after this, we can get to see why this is a problem. Because the best move was queen f5, threatening queen h3. Black played c5 first, which is tricky. Um, I guess that Batman wanted something like d65 and d4. And this is very difficult to hold as a human. Uh, engines like saying this is equal with king f2 but that's difficult to spot because after queen f6 you know you get worried but it, it's a repetition that being said white made the mistake of taking with the queen double exclamation mark sorry uh, double question mark that would be the opposite of that actually and then queen f5 and what is queen f5 doing david queen h3 queen h2 takes takes on f4 and checkmate or you lose a lot of pawns and then eventually this rook gets into the game and it's going to be checkmate so white took on d5 Queen h3 did happen, there was no real way to stop that. And after king f2, queen h2 as advertised, bishop g2, black is already winning. Black was already winning as soon as black so played c5 and white played queen takes c5. And after bishop f3, let's just finish this game, bishop g4, putting pressure on f3. So for example, bishop takes f3, queen takes c3, queen takes c1 is the threat. Rook c3, and after queen h2, White resigned. Rook e1, bishop f1, bishop h3. So there's no real way to defend f1. If you go something like rook f3, I guess you can always go queen g4, but even cleaner is rook takes f1 and queen g3, and then bishop takes f1. There's no real way to defend as white, so white resigned. And that's how Michael Bassman from the UK, very famous player, I played against him by the way. Um, and then he won one and I won the last one. So I won the last one. But that's how Michael created this immortal uh, waiting game. Which is amazing. Hope you learned something. I did. I learned that, well, sometimes it does look like someone has a dominating position. But if you ask the question of what are you actually threatening? What, 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 is, what, are, what, what is your plan? How do you win this position? Then it becomes very difficult. And Michael Basman gives me this feeling that when I look at his games, it's not easy to beat him. And that happens with any, with any chess player that is strong. They're not easy to beat. They're resilient. They're stubborn. And they won't give up. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, if you want me to make a video about anything, please let me know. It would really help me a lot if you subscribe or give a like uh, or watch another video. It's one of these sites. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.